So I'm making this little summer top with this beautiful cotton lappet fabric. Uh, I may change the design a bit as I go along. Let's see. So I'm not using a pattern at all. And all I need is a tape measure, some scissors and some pins. So I'm going to start with my design by cutting out the sleeves. So if I measure myself, my mum is pretty much the same size as me. It's going to have slightly dropped seam and I only want just a little sleeve to cover up the arm, so about 16 centimetres. So you need seam allowance. So I'm measuring how wide I want the sleeve. Got to be comfortable. So 46 centimetres looks good. So let's mark that off and add seam allowance. So it's going to be a French seam. So it's probably going to be about 0.7 and then I turn it over and another 0.7 so just to make sure I've got enough I'm going to do it one and a half centimetres seam out. Okay so that's one sleeve let's just see if I can fit two on one width so measure that shuffle it over yes I can that's perfect so I can cut all that off of one strip and that'll be both sleeves then. Check the whole width one metre ten get my tape measure half it 55 centimetres, 55 centimetres, that's half. So I'm just going to go ahead and cut this in half. And then I'll have more than I need for my sleeve. Two sleeves, done. Put that to one side. So next, I'm going to cut out the piece that goes down the front. So let's just go along the lines near the salvage. So I need 15 width. So that's the piece that comes down the front. Now for the main body. So I'm going to fold that in half, I think, to do that. Square it all up. So I've got some spare fabric, I'm just going to test my stitch and make sure it works well for this. So I've put it on a 2 and a 0 for straight stitch just to see. It's pretty small but it's very fine fabric so I think small works well. Let's start. I am going to do an inverted box pleat at the centre back as when I cut it I found it was a little bit big around the neck when I tried it on. So join up centre fronts to find the centre back. Try it on to make sure it's still okay. Here goes for the real thing. And go inside the seam allowance with your first row of stitches. So I think I'm going to do um, a nice binding around this edge. So probably 0.4 millimetres probably be okay because binding is usually 5 millimetres. I always trim as I go. I just find it much tidier and easier and neater. 
and you d then you don't have to do it all at the end and it doesn't get trapped in with seams as you sew. So inverse box pleat done. Actually now let's do the sleeve. So I'm doing um, French seams so instead of right sides together you put wrong sides together first. And um, because it's such a short straight seam I don't need pins, who needs pins? Just go for it. Turn it through, yeah. I might cut it down a bit and then I can have a really neat thin seam. Three or four millimetres when I'm cutting it down. And then you won't get any horrible bits sticking out where you don't want them on the right side. Right, so work out where you're going to line it up all the way along. There we go. Beautiful seam. So that's the inside. And then on the right side, it just looks like a normal seam. Time to do the hems of the sleeves. Here we go. So I've got right side facing out. Fold it over twice. I'm about two to three millimetres away from the edge. Reverse stitch and then I tuck it under as I go and just making sure that the same thickness or width of your hem is the same all the way around. But if you're not confident doing that then you can pin it before you sew. I love working with gorgeous natural fabrics. It's such a pleasure to hold it and to sew it. Line up your stitches, reverse stitch, and then little tip, what I do is I cut the right side threads first, nice and close, and then I turn it over and I give the wrong side threads a little tug and then any um, thread that was still on the other side comes through to the wrong side and then it's totally hidden. So there we go, little seam, little hem I mean, for my sleeve. So two sleeves done, now for the next stage. Totally forgot about my binding for the neck edge so I'm going to cut off the salvage from the front pieces and it's wide enough that it can cope with it so I'm just going to take off three centimetres. Just cutting it in half, might have said one side wider than the other so let's see how it goes. This should be enough for the neck. More than enough, perfect. So I don't need to neaten off the ends because the panel that's going down the front is going to cover over that part um, later on. So with binding I like to work on the right, no I like to work on the wrong side first, flip it over and then I can top stitch from the right side and then you know that it's going to look good on the right side. But I like to have the binding on top so I'm going to flip it around to the other side. And actually it's probably quite good that I've got salvage as my binding because it will stop the neck curve um, from stretching out longer where it's on the bias. Again, who needs pinning? Just go for it. I'm lining up the edge of the presser foot um, with the edge of the fabric, and that's about five millimeters. Take it slow, make sure it's right first time. Okay, so I've done the binding on the wrong side. I'm now going to flip it over and do the binding on the right side. So I'm just going to cut the extra length off that I don't need. And then you tuck it in and then fold it and fold it again and then I can sew it down. Neck binding done, a bit tricky around the curves because it's not on the bias, but 
but it just about worked and look even better when it's ironed. So that's strengthening the neck edge really nicely. Now it's time to do the front. So I'm going to neaten off the bottom edge first. One centimetre seam allowance is fine. Turn it through, make a nice neat point. Snipping off the bindings, so it's not too long. And I will put a pin in this time. Just for fun. And then I can check how long my piece is. Oh, perfect. It's longer than my actual garment, so that's the main thing. And I might actually put that, make it into a design feature so that it does purposefully hang down longer but all neatened off and finished nicely and that could be quite nice. I'll see at the end and see how I'd like to do it. That's where design can change along the way. I had a bit of a break from sewing. I'm having my hot drink and just had an amazing chat with my best friend Andrea. Oh, good times. So hopefully you can see this. I've sewn that seam. That's the binding around the neck edge. And then I'm gonna fold this over tuck that in and top stitch that down and that's the piece that goes all the way down the front so that'll be double thickness and the rest is single thickness so here I've actually decided to pin it because this is one of the trickiest parts making sure it lines up and doesn't um, kind of ruck up and twist as you sew so that should keep me on the straight and narrow. So here I have it, a nice neat sewn edge and I'm still not sure about the hem edge and this extra long piece I have at the bottom. So I've just left that so that I can decide right at the end. So I've pinned my side seam here and I'm just working out where to stop for the armhole. So this is my sleeve, and I'm just gonna lay that right up against, and then I can put my pin in, in just the right place, here. So let's do that. Take that out of the way, and then we know where we're going. Easy peasy, who needs a pattern? Just make it up as you go. Right, let's sew that. French seam styly. So now I'm ready to do my sleeve and attach that on. So I'm going to make sure that the actual seam of my sleeve is on the underside and will run in line with the seam of the actual garment. Wow, am I the luckiest girl around? Heidi made this for me all on her own and she's not even seven yet. It's got in it chia seeds, ginger, three bananas. What does that say, Heidi? Is that a blood orange? And then half an avocado yes. salad dressing came separate, of course, not in with a smoothie. Delicious. Thank you, darling. Cinnamon. Cheers. <laughs> okay, so I've, I don't think I've ever done a French seamed sleeve, and I thought I'd just go with it and figured out that actually where they join it's quite impossible for make it to make it sit kind of flat and pretty so I'm going to fudge that by doing some hand sewing and on the other side I decided to do a flat seam and then I've cut down this raw edge and I'm going to fold over the salvage which happens to be there and top stitch that down from the right side and then that will keep it neat and tidy and stop it from fraying. Perfect. Time to top stitch. <laughs> so I've taken off this part of the sewing machine so that I can get the sleeve right around and in deeply so that I can sew it more easily. So here we go. Top stitching to make it lovely and neat on the inside and the outside of course too. So 
I've tried this on a few times and I think I have finally decided I'm going to cut off these ends that come to the very bottom of the garment at the front and I'm going to put a really deep hem on it because it's quite a long garment and my mum's taller than me but generally I find that if it's just above the knee it looks more attractive than below the knee. So I'm just going to cut that off on both sides and then do a lovely deep hem and also the nice thing about it is then your hem at the bottom has got a nice um, double thickness um, more, more strong white than the rest of the garment so if it was really thin you'd hardly notice it but if it's kind of chunky like this um, I think it will kind of just give it more body, more weight and it will hang better as well Okay, I've pinned the hem all the way around, now I'm going to top stitch it from the wrong side, right near the very edge, about two millimetres away from the edge, and then I'm pretty much done. So exciting. Here we go. Inside, outside.